Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode here in MLB The Show 23. So in last episode, we finished up the year four regular season and uh, we were pleasantly surprised by the rookie season of one youngster, that being Ozzy Cardenas. He ended up winning rookie of the year and also winning a batting title, as you can see. His insane first season had a 326 batting average. He had an 854 OPS. And uh, yeah, he just really, really killed it. 3.8 war. And yeah, hoping he has another solid season in him. Um, he was fantastic. And then a lot of other good young players like Garth Howe, Giancarlo Six still got some good development. So they're going to be also in the lineup this season, of course, as well as like guys like Schneider, who he drafted in year one. Just because of the fact that we added them to our 40-man roster back in year one. And we do not want to lose them on like waivers and all that type of thing. So they will be also in our lineup. And then we also got through the entire offseason. And yeah, pretty much just kept the team as is. We did take, I think it was a pretty solid player in the Rule 5. I can't remember who it was. I think it was in a position that we needed. Was it another catcher? Yeah, I think it was this Cuero guy we took. Uh, he's got B potential. He's 65 at 24, so probably not going to have a super high ceiling. Uh, but still, I think that was a pretty good pickup considering we don't really have a catcher unless we end up using uh, Sixto as a catcher at some point. But right now, we're going to be using him more as an outfielder. But anyways, before we get into assimilating up to the draft and doing some scouting and all that type of thing, I do have a couple comments to go for. So the first one is from Nick Bocker Barons OC, who says... Cardenas had an all-time great rookie year. He, he should be at least an 85 potential. If he has a really bad year at some point, then you can lower back down a little. Also, Sixto is an MLB player right now, so bring him up for sure. Great job, and I'm proud of Cardenas and his incredible season. I told you he was going to be a great player because of his skill set IRL. After a year like that, he would have mid-90s potential. So uh, he said at least 85 potential, and that's what we went ahead and did, as you could see. Cardenas is now up to a B potential, and we put it as an 85. I accidentally, though, when I was doing this, um, knocked down six dose potential to a uh, an 85 at first, but then I realized it was six dose, so I had to move him back up to his 98 potential because that would not have been good otherwise. Uh, but yeah, Cardenas is now at an 85 potential, and uh, yeah, he shouldn't to retire and regress as fast. Hopefully, he has good seasons ahead of him still because if he has like a bad season, maybe we knock him down by a couple points just because. I, I feel like it's kind of a bit of a way of cheating in a sense, just upping potential and all that type of thing. But then again, it's kind of realistic in a sense too. It's kind of more like a, uh, a progressive uh, rating in a sense or potential where the potential doesn't always stay the same. It could jump up, it could go down, that type of thing. Thanks coming is from Gare Blair, I think, just because now YouTube has like these at symbols. So I don't really know what everybody's names are, but I think it's Gare Blair anyways. Um, and he says, I would definitely target the prospects who have 50% interest to guarantee you aren't wasting resources or draft picks. Considering this is a draft of glory series, you need to sign as many of the prospects as possible. And yeah, so basically we're going to be trying a new method this year with the drafting. We're going to be scouting out generally for good pitchers, like starting pitchers and relief pitchers and, uh, maybe one other position for the first three weeks. We're going to generally scout them through international and all that type of thing. And then once we have those guys all generally scouted for uh, one week each, or two weeks maybe, actually, actually, yeah, wait, just starting pitchers and uh, relief pitchers will scout with this. Basically, first two weeks of scouting, we'll scout out starting pitchers in general. Uh, the next two weeks, we'll scout out relief pitchers in general. And then we'll go into individually scouting out pitchers and random other players and all that type of thing. So that way we could hopefully maximize late round picks and all that type of thing and get guys to sign as much as possible with higher interest. So just, uh, yeah, we're going to try a different method this season, see how it is. And we could kind of tweak our method as we go on through the series. But hopefully we could uh, get a lot more players to sign with us. Next two comments are from It's Dawn. The first one says McAllister should be in AAA. He is 23, 73 overall. To me, he has a chance to make the majors this year. I'd add him to the 40 man immediately and let him and Garth grow while they're both still very young. So I didn't add McAllister to the 40 man yet. I probably will maybe next at the start of next episode. But uh, for now, he is in AAA. And uh, hopefully he has a really solid season and gets a lot of growth. And then him and Howe could be running the MLB next year. Right now, Garth Howe is our ace in the MLB. And it'll be exciting to see what he does in his rookie season. 
And then the last comment from it's Don says, let Shu play in double A and develop him how we did with our prior drafts. All the gentlemen and others were low rated at 18 and now a 60 overall in two years. Start him, adjust him in the lineup and monitor the training. So uh, there was a reply to this from Yo Blake who said, you're completely wrong. He's 43. He'll fail in double A and most likely regress. Single A allows him to only get better as there is zero regression. So... I think for this episode, we are probably going to leave him in single A. We'll see how he develops. And if he develops, like starts to develop really good and stuff like that, maybe we give him a chance in double A. But we kind of keep a short leash on it in a sense. And if he starts to really struggle, then we put him back down to double that type of thing. Because I want to keep both of you guys uh, happy in that sense. Because I, I get that's good to have like uh, good little debates like that. But I think for now, we're probably going to start him in single and uh, wait till his overalls maybe at least like 55 before he's in double just because i feel like 43 is probably our lowest overall player we've ever had and uh he probably wouldn't really get much starting time like a lot of these guys that are 43 here we never drafted those guys so i would rather probably give him a little bit more time first before getting into the double a lineup but anyways that is that uh, first, before we get into doing some scouting and all that stuff, this episode meet, but might be a little bit long. We are going to go ahead and adjust our training. If I could remember where this is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's over this way. There you go. Um, so I'll leave all the re uh, regular guys on the right spots. But the guys we just drafted, for example, let's see. Who do we got here? Josh Groves. Yeah, he could work on his contact hitting. Why not? Actually, that vision and discipline is pretty low, but still, we need to get that contact up a little bit. So, we'll leave him there. Uh, what else we got? Ray McMahon, vision and discipline. Sure, that's fine. I don't really care where a lot of these guys are signed as long as they're growing in the right areas. It's the only thing. Okay, I think that's it. Kellenberger, this guy's never going to make it probably to the majors. His deep potential is concerning. Um, Quero, sure. Vision and discipline, yeah, I guess. Um, the rest of this should be good. We need to make sure our lineups are also set up properly once we get to the start of uh, the season. So, okay, we're going to keep that all that same. Let's uh, go over to, I think there was one last thing I wanted to check, but I can't remember. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Let's go to our scouting staff and make sure we have the scouts with the best. I think it was discovery you guys were saying. No, it was efficiency. So Kurt Garcia is really good efficiency-wise. MacArthur and Flutie especially is not that good. Do we have scouts that are better at efficiency that we could get rid of Flutie for? Because technically, he would be the one I would be probably looking to move the most. Okay, this guy might be taking, might be able to take a spot. Seventy-six thousand plus fifteen thousand is ninety thousand. Though we wouldn't have enough money to get that guy. We probably have to go down here a little bit more. Let's see. Discovery is not good on that guy. We're looking for a good efficiency. This guy's really efficient. His positional players isn't as good though as our current scout. Trying to find somebody with good efficiency and positional players. Let's see. I just don't want to find a bad scout. Oh, there's a decent one here. Yeah, we could take this guy. He's got 79 efficiency, which is better than Flutie. He's got positional players 84, which is the same as Flutie. So, yeah, we'll take uh, Dan Stoitz in for Flutie. And there's our new scouting staff. We'll see if that helps us out at all. And, uh, yeah, we're going to try our new scouting method, which should be interesting. So let's get to the regular season, get through spring training. There we go. Make sure we got our lineup set up properly in all of our leagues. MLB's looking good. Let's check the double A lineup. Make sure we got our prospects in the right spots where they're set up for success. I think they're all in the lineup, it looks like to me. Yeah, I think so. Triple A wise, Pip in the three spot. Anybody that shouldn't be here. Nope. Looks like they're all in the lineup, I think. Yeah, I think everybody's in the lineup in the right spots. So there's that. Let's get rid of this notification here. And let's go to... 
I think there's one more thing that I wanted to check. I think. Pitching rotation. Yeah, that's it. So Garth Howe, there, that's good. I want to make sure we're utilizing those uh, closing pitchers, like closing pitchers or set of guys. Montero is the number two guy in double A. That's fine. He's got eight potential, so hopefully he could reach that. Uh, we go to, uh, actually, Guzman, who we just drafted, is going to be the closer. That's exactly what we want. And then if we go to Triple A, Gary McAllister's the uh, ace down there. That's good. Ken Robert is a setup guy. That's good. And then Dennis Lake is the actual closer. I like that. Perfect. Everything is set up the way I want it. Now we could do some scouting and all that stuff in a few days. So let's go to here. Okay, let's uh, set up our scouting stuff and do it the way we want. Um, yeah, I already set up training kind of. So, well, I really didn't change anything. But okay, scouting wise here, let's go to our number one priority. Let's set this as Kurt Garcia. We're just going to scout position. Starting pitchers, we're going to put one in the west, one in the east, and one in the central. So we'll go with, hmm. Oh, there's also international, though. We should probably scout international, too. Let's get uh, Garcia doing international. Why not? And then we'll do... The thing is, Stoitz isn't good at pitchers. Maybe I'll have them scout out catchers then for the first week as well. Or for all four weeks that we're doing this general scout. So, international we just did. I don't know where the rest of these wins will be. Let's do west. And after two weeks, we'll change it up a little bit. So, there you go. Starting pitcher on the west. And then, yeah, you're going to be scouting out only catchers right now. Trying to find us a good catcher prospect. And uh, we're going to change you every week, I think. Yeah, we'll do catchers. It's central. Why not? So there you go. Let's do our general scouting for we can see how this method works. Hopefully it does. Hopefully we can find also some good players in those positions that we need. So let's set that up again here. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely scouting out a lot more players all at once, which is good. So Kurt Garcia was just doing international. Now he's going to get changed over to, where is this guy? West. So he's going to get changed over to East. Wait, actually, he's going to stay like that for two weeks. Yeah, those guys are going to stay like this for the first two weeks. Then they're going to change to international, or east and central. And then, uh, yeah, it's the only one that's changing every week is Stoitz on the catchers. He's going to scout out every region here and maybe find us some catchers. I think this is a good little method here. I hope it works out. Our team is doing terribly so far this season, but then again, we have a lot more of our prospects making it now because of my problems I made in the first year. Okay, so we've done East, we've done Central, we'll do International now on Catchers, and now we gotta change these guys up, so we'll edit your scouting assignment to, actually we need to go to Relief Pitchers at some point. Yeah, we're gonna Relief Pitchers now. For these guys, we'll do International Relief Pitchers and West Relief Pitchers. So we won't get as much scouted from the central and whatnot, but we're just doing a little bit of a general scout to start off this uh, scouting process, and then afterwards we'll just individually scout out players. Hopefully we have enough time to scout out players individually. We got a lot of notifications here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I'm not going to take a look at any player stats till the end of this episode. So, Okay, let's go back to scouting again. That's good. Hmm. I think we're going to start uh, scouting regular players now. I think that was the, our little general scout. We only did it for three weeks instead, but just a little general scout. There's also Discover New Prospects, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. Okay, so let's go to Kurt Garcia and get him scouting out some individual players here. What do we got for the positions that we need? I wrote down our main positions of need, which is starting pitcher, relief pitcher, catcher, second baseman, and then right field is at the most. So let's start with uh, catchers, I guess. Actually, Kirk Garcia is good with uh, starting pitchers, so we should probably get him with a pitcher. Yeah, but he's also really good with positional. So he could be either or. Um, let's go here. This guy might be a really good player. This guy's probably going to have a high overall, but he's 21. 
I'll scout out the 18 year olds first. So let's uh, scout out Sammy Rivas. Um, this guy's good at positional players, so we'll get him to scout out. Let's see. Do we have any catchers that we uh, found out interest anything interesting about? Maybe this guy. Oh, this guy could be interesting. Omar Cruz. Yeah, let's get Omar Cruz scouted out. And we will get this guy signed to more pitchers. So let's see what we got for relief pitchers, maybe. Some of these guys are probably going to have a high overall out of the gate, my guess. Yeah, let's get Virgil Pack scouted out. He might be one of those older guys that are really good, like McAllister. So might as well scout him out, see how good he is. And yeah, hopefully he's decent. Hopefully we can find out information about a lot of these guys kind of quick because we don't have a lot of time up until the draft. Let's just go auto on all this stuff. Hopefully none of these major guys are getting injured. Let's see what we got here. Rivas is looking solid, but I don't know if he's the type of guy I want to get right now. The catcher is looking really solid too, but he might have a low overall, so he might be more of a project player. And then Virgil Pack right now is looking solid as well. Okay, let's continue scouting those guys out. Hopefully we scout out the right players here. Because we don't have as much time to scout individual guys. Um, let's go auto on Luis Major. I don't know who that is even. I don't think I drafted that guy. So it doesn't matter too much. Um, hmm. 100% scout on Virgil Pack. He's not that good. He's like 120 30. He might have like a high potential or high overall, but his potential is not going to be super high. He might be an okay later round pick, but I'm going to definitely remove him. Um, and then Sammy Rivas is looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good. Our scouts currently have him as the best prospect, but we have other prospects to scout, so he might be the guy. Like he's guaranteed to be probably like a B potential player, so. And then yeah, I'll get Cruz still scouted out. Uh, let's assign Kirk Garcia to somebody in the infield maybe instead. Or see if there's any other catchers that might be decent. Because I would like to get ourselves a good catcher in this draft potentially. But if we need to run 6-0 as a catcher, so be it. Nobody else listed as a first rounder. So we're not going to scout actually any more catchers at the moment. Um, let's go back to relief pitchers. There's got to be a good relief pitcher somewhere in here. Claudio Cosmo. Or there's this dude. Uh, let's get Ponce and stuff scouted out too. Why not? And then MacArthur will get you assigned to Cosmo. Because we need to find some good relievers. Because we mainly don't have any reliever project, uh, prospects at the moment. So we got to make sure that we're doing a good job with that. How much days have we got before the draft? Seven more weeks. Okay. We still have a decent amount of time to scout out some guys. Um, Cruz is looking pretty good. Yeah, I don't I don't mind Cruz. He's supposed to go maybe like fourth overall according to our scouts. He might be the catcher we are looking for. Ooh, those future potentials might be really good too. His uh, like uh, his like uh, what is it? His like uh, arm strength, like his fielding and stuff like that. Not super good in the future, but contact hitting looks really solid for the future. Power hitting that type of thing. So, uh, yeah, Omar Cruz might be a very interesting player to uh, draft this year. We're going to remove him for now. Let's see if there's any other good catchers, maybe. Actually, maybe not good catchers, but good infield players at least. Because um, the rest of these guys aren't supposed to go even in the first round. There could be more of them, but still. Um, this guy's supposed to go high up, but I... Hmm. This guy might be really good, too. Dave McMillan. We have the sixth overall pick this year, potentially, too, so... There's a chance that we might not even get some of the guys that we're scouting out here. Hopefully, uh, some of the good ones slide. Damn, that was a pretty good week of baseball. As Josh Groves has been injured for a day or two, we'll go auto on that. But that was a good week. Four wins in seven games. That was our best week of the season yet. Uh, Ponce is looking okay, but not super high ceiling-wise. But still might be a solid reliever to take in a later round. We will uh, change him for another relief prospect, if there is one here. I don't need to get out closers all the time. 
Ooh, there's a good second baseman potentially to scout out. I'm going to scout out him for sure and this other second baseman. Yeah, one of them is probably really good, my guess. Um, Any other pitchers? Let's go with starting pitcher, I guess. Since there's starting pitchers, it's still supposed to go early on. Because we could use starters as relievers, too. I didn't scout out this guy at all, but he's already got a lot of uh, uh, interest, which is good. So let's get him fully scouted. Um, these guys need to be fully scouted still, but we will eventually go to those second basemen. Get both of them scouted out. Hopefully, uh, they're pretty good. And, of course, we have a trash week after that good week. Jeez. Yeah, we're doing terribly so far, but that's okay. Hopefully, uh, Garth Howe is having a decent season, all things considered. Um, those guys aren't fully scouted out yet, but uh, Gustavo Ramirez is looking pretty solid, too, for potential-wise. Like, they're not all fully scouted out yet, but they all of these guys might be decent. I really hope we find some good players this year, and hopefully we get guys with high interest in later rounds, even if we didn't fully scout out them. Let's go another week. Auto on that. Auto on that again, and hey, we had a win to end that week. How much more weeks do we got? A couple more weeks to go. We got Gustavo above 50% interest, and he looks like he's going to be really good. Our scouts now have him at number one, so that's good. We already have two uh, prospects that might uh, be really good players. Okay, so now that all these guys are almost scouted out, Let's assign Garcia to one of those second basemen because I do need a second baseman, so might as well find out some information about these guys. Uh, we will change this guy to top priority. And then we'll remove Cosmo. Cosmo as a relief pitcher is solid, but he's probably like a second round pick, but he might still go first round, who knows. And we'll get that other second baseman scouted out. Let me just make sure this guy could actually scout out positional players no he, oh it's the other guy that can more hmm i guess we'll keep uh, this guy on pitchers for now let's see do we have any other good starting pitchers potentially to scout out here in the top 10 salomon valley this might be a really good draft for um for pitchers based on what i'm seeing okay let's continue our scouting for another week but yeah, we're probably going to have a really niche area of scouting because we haven't really scouted any other positions other than the ones we need. So it's a bit uh, concerning that we're not going to find a lot of good players that have interest, but who knows, maybe we will. Is it that general scouting we did in the first few weeks? Ooh, Trevino has a lot of interest and he might be really high overall. I'm going to keep on scouting him for sure. We're going to remove McMillan. McMillan's solid, but I don't think he's going to be a super good player, but... At least he already has some interest to build up. But uh, we want that uh, potential to be maybe a little bit higher up. Alexis Costa is the other second baseman I wanted to scout out. So we'll get him scouted out too. How much more weeks? We got three more weeks. Three more weeks of scouting to do. And yeah, hopefully we find ourselves the best prospect that we need. Let's go auto fix rotation. Auto on that, and that should be good. Let's go back to scouting here. And uh, Antoine Trevino is pretty good. He might be the fourth best pick in the draft. Ooh, might have as high as a 78 overall, but he definitely has like a 63 to a 78, and he has maybe a 92 potential at highest. I just hope that he's not only a 77 potential, because that would suck. He has a lot of interest too, which is great. Hmm. He might be the type of player we want to take. He might be the type of player we want to take. And then this guy's still not scouted out yet, but he might be more of a project second baseman it's looking like at the moment. Let's uh, go to another prospect here. Let's get out some other positions that we've not scouted out yet. Um, center field. Yeah, might as well find out about this uh, Ronald Jacquez guy. Um, There's also another good starting pitcher, though. Bobby Gray, maybe. Yeah, let's get Bobby Gray scouted out. I think this is going to be a pitching-heavy draft. Just based on what I'm seeing. Which, I mean, I'm okay with because we do need more starters. We could use them also as relievers. So. 
Okay, auto on that. Uh, ooh, Ken Robert, that's our one of our setup slash closer guys. He has broken a nail, and he's gonna be out for a few days. Jeez, painful injury, breaking a fingernail. Let's go to scouting. Solomon Valley is looking solid, but he's maybe an early second rounder, but he still probably will go first round because of his rank. Let's continue scouting. Actually, this is the last week almost of scouting we have. Yep, this is the last week, which means we're not going to be able to scout at any players after this, I don't think. Let's auto on this. Uh, auto on that. Um, no. Um, auto on this again. Geez, auto on this. And there we go. This is our last week of scouting, so you guys can tell me if there's any players you want me to still scout out for that final week, but let's remove all these players and see what we got for prospects that we scouted out here. So, um, let's go team rank. Actually, not team rank. Actually, team rank may make sense, probably. So, Gustavo Ramirez is probably the safe bet as the best player in this draft, potentially. For, like, a future starting pitcher, he, he might have, like, a really high ceiling. He's got a lot of interest. He doesn't have much of a bonus demand because the MLB had him ranked at 41. So, yeah, Gustavo Ramirez might be a solid player. We do have 12.92 million of bonus allotment money, just in case you guys wanted to know about that, but... Yeah, I think Gustavo Ramirez from Mexico might be a really good one if we have the chance to. We have the sixth overall pick, so we got to hope that he slides a little bit. So there is one guy that's very interesting. Actually, let me remove that again. Um, So there's that. We also have this guy 10% scouted. He might be solid, but he's 21, and we don't know too much about him. He's a closer. Actually, let's go by each, uh, like each uh, position, just to make it a little bit more clear. So Sammy Rivas also might be solved. We have him ranked at three. There's also Bobby Gray, who we just scouted out, who might be solved, but more of a project player, my guess. Who knows? Our scouts have him ranked at five. So those are our three starting pitchers that we scouted out. There's a lot of other starting pitchers that we found out information about for later rounds because of our general scouting too, it looks like, which is good. Because I never scouted out these guys like individually, but they do have a lot more scouted progress than other players would. And there's a high interest on some of them too. Like this guy's got 62% interest. Might be a really solid player. Who knows? So there's what we got for starting pitcher wise. Let's see what we got for relief pitcher wise. There was like one guy we scouted out and that was Cosmo. We got a couple information on some other guys. But I don't think it's a good reliever pool. It's probably better at starting. But there we go. Closing pitcher wise. Uh, we didn't scout any closers, but we do find did find out some information, it looks like, on some closers a little bit. These guys are like 10% scouted. Some of them are only 5%, though. Uh, catchers, we did scout out this Omar Cruz guy, and he might be a really solid player as well. Projected to go 7th overall, so we might be able to snag this guy. I, I think this guy would be a really good pick, too, but obviously we could use more pitching help, too. So it's up to you guys on that front. But yeah, we got some good general information on some of these uh, catchers. So there's that. First baseman-wise, there was Dave McMillan. I don't think he's worth a top six pick, but he might be solid. We didn't get out with this guy, but he might be a really good player too, or more of a project, who knows. There you go on that front. Second baseman-wise, we scouted out Antoine Trevino. He might be solid as well. So there's definitely a lot of different players we could draft. Trevino was pretty solid. Costa's probably more of a second rounder, but he might go still first round. We didn't get out any third baseman short drops or anything else, though, so that's a little bit barren, but I'd say it's probably between Ramirez. Um, let me go back to here. It's between Ramirez, Rivas. It's probably between Cruz as well or Trevino for our pick. If they're all available at that point, we'd have to make a unanimous decision. But I think it's got to be one of those four. Final thing before we end this episode. Let me take a look here at our prospects and see how they're doing. How our MLB guys are doing. That type of thing. So, starting with our starting pitcher wise. Garth Howe is up to a 79, which is good. But he's been struggling, of course, with the team in front of him. 
How is his FIP rating? His FIP is 5.83. Yeah, he has not been good at all, but that happens because we have to get him into the lineup anyways. At least he's developing, and uh, he should be better as early as next season too, but he's having a little bit of a rough time here. Uh, Gary McAllister down in triple. Actually, let's do each league first. Let's do MLB first. Then we'll go to triple, then to double. Um, let's go to Giancarlo Sixto, I guess. He's been fantastic so far. Looks like not super great, but 11 home runs, 33 RBIs, batting a 263 up to an 84 at 20. Jeez. Yeah, this guy's going to be a monster once he actually gets up to like a 90 plus. Yeah, he's developing quite nicely. He's got a 1.8 war as well. Yeah, he's been good. Um, Ozzy Cardenas is batting a 298 in his uh, second season. Still only a 75, and his overall has dropped, which is weird. But we did give him better potential. But that's kind of weird that his overall dropped. But he is batting a 298 though. Again, seven home runs, 39 RBIs. His batting average is definitely way worse than it was last year, but it's still really good. OPS is also down a little bit too. Fielding is better. His war is positive. So, still having a good year, but a little bit of a downfall from last year. Uh, Steve Schneider, up to a 72, batting a 206. He's not been too great, but we had to play him in our lineup already because of the fact we uh, he doesn't have any more minor league options. So that's kind of unfortunate what he did in the first year. He does have a .1 war, so he's not doing terribly. But he's not doing great either. Um, Ollie Gelman, oof, batting a 191. But he is developing, so at least some of these guys are developing. But it kind of sucks having to throw them in our lineup already. But I made that mistake back in year one, and I cannot erase that. The war is negative .7, though, so he has been struggling quite a bit. Uh, who else we got here? Bill O'Donnell. Batting at 210. He's got 8 home runs and 28 RBIs. That's actually a lot better than I expected for a 62. That's a lot better than I expected. The average is not that great, but 8 home runs and 28 RBIs. He is in a pretty good spot, I guess. He is in negative war as well, though, so he has been struggling too. Not a surprise, though. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for MLB. Let's go to AAA here. There's Gary McAllister, who is doing really well. But he doesn't have a good win-loss ratio, obviously, because the team, probably. But uh, he's got a 2.93 ERA. That's fantastic. The whip is a little bit high, but it's not terrible. And he's got a 1.3 uh, war, so he's been pretty good. Up to a 74 already. Should probably be in the majors as early as next season. Uh, Dennis Lake is a closer. Fantastic. Fantastic. Solid ERA. Whip is fantastic as well. 0.92. Obviously, being a closer, it's going to be like that. And he's got a 1 war. Uh, Pip so far in triple is batting a 238. Oh, no. Did his potential drop? Was he a potential before? He was a potential, I think. His potential dropped to a B. I think. Because that's what it shows the potential went down. So he was an A potential player, but now he's a B potential? Because if so, that's a major development. And he dropped off in potential. Oof. I don't know why he dropped. That's kind of concerning. Uh, Ken Roberts been pretty good so far. I'm going to go super in depth with some of these stats, but... Because we have a lot of prospects to look at now. Okay, let's go down to double. Luis Guzman as a closer has been elite. Holy crap. He's went through 24 innings and he's only uh, like, he's got a .73 ERA and a .85 whip. Like, what's that war looking like? Or is there even more down there? Yeah, there's war. .4, but that's a nasty ERA. What the heck? For 24 innings? Jeez. Uh, Fletcher Hoffman's been actually solid, but he's still developing down there. Pinero has been good. Steiner's been solid. I don't really know. Looks like some of our prospects are getting development, which is good. But I am concerned about that uh, Pip dropped off in potential, I think. Because, yikes. Dropping to a B potential is still good. But, like, I don't know why he was... I feel like he was always B potential. But I could be wrong. Could be wrong with that. Uh, Michael Chu has jumped up to a 45 being a single A player, but he probably will be 
in the double a roster maybe at the start of next episode or maybe i kind of do that next season but i am starting him this sequel i still so there's that um i think that's almost it let's see league leaders currently yeah it looks like cardenas is still up there in hits which is good but he's like 20 back of bobby witt jr he isn't up there in batting averages like the top guy yet but who knows, maybe he'll make it back to another all-star game. Don't have anybody up there really in leaders. Ollie Gentleman's actually up there in stolen bases as a rookie. That's pretty impressive. He does have that great speed in stealing, so at least he's doing something at the MLB level. That might help us get wins and stuff like that. Huh. So there is that, and I think that's pretty much it. Let me go down to... Um, League leaders in double A and stuff like that right now. See if any of our guys are up there at all. Does not look like it right now in double and in a triple. Doesn't look like it either. Huh. But yeah, I don't know why Pip dropped off in potential. If it's because of his injury he had last year, because he did have an injury last year, so maybe that's the reason why. How's the all-star voting looking like right now for the MLB? Do you got anybody up there in votes? I don't think so, right? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Sixo is up there a little bit in votes, but he's quite far off a lot of other guys. And then, what was it? First baseman-wise... Cardenas is all the way down here. Yeah, I don't know if Cardenas will make it back to the All-Star game again. And what was the last thing I wanted to do? Oh, yeah, award potential, guys. Let's see. Is anybody up there right now for Rookie of the Year? Let's see. Yeah, Giancarlo Sixto is currently leading for Rookie of the Year this year, so we might have back-to-back -back years with Rookie of the Years, which is good. That's if he continues like that. And Cardenas might be actually up there for gold glove for first baseman by the end of the season if they keep up on their current pace. So he might have some award winners again this year, which is good. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode. So in next episode, we'll take it to the draft. Hopefully we'll find some good prospects in again. And uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, see how we do and see how the rest of the league does but i think uh, we're on the right path in terms of developing our prospects but it's kind of concerning on the front that some of them are dropping off in potential and that type of theme so anything down below and i'll see you guys next time